and has not denied my holy name. All right, Shalom Israel. First and foremost, as always, I would like to give all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wachaha Kwadash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth in sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shai's return and double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai and I wanted to do a response video to a video that was done by the beloved Apostle Apostle Gabar as you see right here his YouTube channel is Daily Edification 4. Um, and in this video, there was a statement made by a member of IUIC. Okay. Now, one thing about IUIC, and I remember this going even way back to, um, I believe, the year 2013. Or it could have been 2014, but I remember this guy uh, that was a part of, uh, I think he was known as Ayathon. We used to call his ass the lemur because he had the, you know, you know, he, he had the, 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 the big buggy eyes, you know, kind of like Elder Rakha of uh, GOCC. You know, we used to call his, we used to call him bubble eyes blackfish. But, um, you know, Ayathan, you know, he pretty much came, he pretty much made a statement and said that, quote unquote, you can call the Lord whatever you want. You can call him yo play yogurt, you know. So IUIC has always made light of the Lord's name. OK. And they have no reverence and they have no respect or fear for the name of the Heavenly Father Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai. And that teaching was pretty much passed down, you know, from member to member, even new members who ended up joining IUIC to the point to where now when they go out there and teach they push the narrative that nobody is going to know the name of the Lord until the Lord returns, which makes absolutely no sense. Because when you read the book of Acts, chapter two, verse 21, it tells you and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So. How are you going to be saved if nobody is going to know the name of the Lord until he returns? In order to be saved, you're going to have to have the name before the Savior returns. You can't just receive the name after the Savior returns. Who is he going to beam up? Who is he? Who is the Savior going to beam up into what the world calls UFOs? If nobody is going to have his name until he returns. Okay, so the doc, the, 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 nobody is going to know the name until the Lord returns by IUIC. That doctrine is a huge contradiction according to biblical prophecy because biblical prophecy says that the Lord's elect will have the names the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, before the Messiah returns. So, what I'm gonna do is, I am gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna play this video here by IUIC, 
and then I'm gonna continue from there. So let's listen, you know, what the, uh, what the, uh, the, the goat has to say himself. Okay, so he said, so you, you pretty much heard it, okay? He said, oh, look at that, 144. The video started buffering at 144. But, um, okay, he said that the name of the Messiah is called the Word of God, okay? Now, what sense do that make, okay? First off, the word of God is one of many titles that the Messiah is known by, okay? And a matter of fact, if we come over here to the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, okay? And I, uh, in the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, okay? <clears throat> Which the NOT is not available because, you know, I don't have internet connection, but Isaiah 9 and 6 says this, for unto us a child is born, okay? Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Now, wait a minute. We should stop right there and start calling the Messiah Wonderful. So, Basically, when, when who the world calls the word of God returns, right? We should all just start yelling, wonderful, wonderful, down here, wonderful, wonderful. But wait a minute. There's many things in this world that's wonderful. Are not the birds wonderful? Okay, are, 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 are not tigers wonderful? Are not the clouds of the sky wonderful? Is not the sun and the moon wonderful? So again, a name specifies or indicates who you are talking to. You know, uh, uh, so-called UFOs are wonderful. You know, I mean, when Yahawashar returns it and what the world calls UFOs and you calling them wonderful, you know, <laughs> he gonna look at you like, well, I mean, there's many things that's wonderful. Are, are, are you talking about my chariot? My, my, my chariot is wonderful, you know? But you see, these IUIC guys, that's why we say they're not on any level, okay? So you see, wonderful, and, and by the way, Isaiah 9 and 6 is talking about the Messiah, okay? So here, it is it's giving you a, a, a list of titles that, that 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 he'll be known by. Okay. Just like uh Malak Kazadak, okay, um in the book of Genesis, which is the Hebrew word for uh for um Melchizedek, Melchizedek okay, Malak Kazadak. Okay, that again, that's another one of the titles of Yahawashai, okay which is what, the king of righteousness, okay? Even though there was many righteous kings, but Yahawashai is the king of righteousness, right? So let's continue reading. <coughs> okay, so he shall be called Wonderful Counselor. So wait a minute, you mean telling me we should just call Yahawashai Counselor? We might as well call him Counselor then, okay? 
But wait a minute. Isn't there not millions of counselors on this planet? There's millions of counselors on this planet. You know? Hey, a hey, counselor. A hey, counselor. Down here, down here. Counselor, save me. But wait a minute. Which which counselor is you talking about? Okay? <coughs> you see that? There's many counselors. You got a counselor named Bob. You got a counselor uh, uh, named Steve. You got a counselor named Stacy. You got a counselor named Keisha. You know, you got a counselor named Mike. You got a counselor uh, 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 named David. So come on, man. There's many counselors. <clears throat> so again, a counselor, counselor is just a title. Okay. Okay. It says the mighty God, the everlasting father in which he is known as the everlasting father, right? Because, well, in the scriptures, it tells you that that Yahweh was the first spirit created and by him, everything was was created and, and without him was not anything created. So Yahweh created, you know, all of our spirits. He created the angels. Okay, he created the angels and, and then he created the heavens and the earth along with, 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 with his angels, which would be the elect because the elect was with him from the beginning. Right. So Yahweh Shai is known as the everlasting father. Okay, because, you know, he created our spirits. He created the angels as well as the demons, you know. He created the, the constellations of heaven. You see? So, so Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is also known as the everlasting father. Okay? So, so um, you know, it says the prince of peace. Okay? And, you know, he, he that can receive it, you know, the, the prince of peace. Because what is a prince? A prince is basically the son of a king and again Yahweh is the ultimate king okay and a matter of fact he was he was our very first king you know <coughs> he, he was our very first king oh I mean ultimately you know even though he did set up Moses to be our first king you know but you know in the book of Samuel you know the Lord was our king you know and Israel wanted an actual king that they could see, you know, and, and touch and, and hear and, and, you know. So, you know, the Lord got mad. But, um, you know, Yahweh is the son of the Heavenly Father, who is the ultimate king. Okay. But, um. Okay. In Isaiah 9 and 6, you clearly see that there's there's many different titles that Yahweh Shai go by. So the word of God is no more than another title that Yahweh Shai goes by. Now, if we come over here to Google, okay, Google gives you the definition of title. Excuse me. Okay. Google gives you the definition of title. So this this is this is the definition of title from Google.com. And what do we see right here? It says the name of a book, composition, or other artistic work. But what I really want to draw your attention to is the second definition. In the second definition, what do we see there? Okay, 
we see a name that describes someone's position or job. Ooh. So I'm going to read that again and then I'm going to explain it to you. A title is a name that describes someone's position or job. Okay? So what is yeah, ultimately, what is Yahweh Shai's position in the heavens? He he he's he's the um he he's the the um the high priest. Okay? He's the high priest. He's also known as the mediator between the Israelite men and Yahweh. Those are also titles, okay? A high priest is a title. Okay, there's many high priests, but Yahweh Shai is the top high priest in the heavens. Okay, <clears throat> in, in, in the spirit world, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is the ultimate high priest. Okay, now you have high priests down here on earth, whether on the left hand side or the right hand side. But the ultimate high priest is Yahweh, is Yahweh Shai. Okay. Now, there's a reason why he's called Yahweh Shai. Okay. Which Yahweh Shai is his name. That's not a title. Okay. But you see, you see, Yahweh Shai, he's also the ultimate counselor. <laughs> okay. So being called the word of God, that's not a name. That's a title. That's a position that was given to Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai is in fact the word of the most high. Okay. The word of Yahweh. Okay. And, and, and he's the word of Yahweh that sits at his, at the right hand side of the heavenly father okay so the word of god is a title that's not a name that is a position that was given to yahweh shai even though yahweh shai you know is also the son of the heavenly father he's also known as the word of the heavenly father okay so again a title is a name that describes someone's position okay the word of, the word of god that's a title okay that 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 is a position that was given to yahweh shai because well yahweh shai is in fact the knowledge wisdom and understanding of the holy scriptures okay Okay, that's why he's called the word of God, because Yahweh Shai is the knowledge, wisdom and understanding of the holy scriptures. So you can understand. So what, what are you talking about? His name is the word of God. Okay. First off, the word of God, that's three different words. How the fuck is three different words going to be a name? Okay. Anyways, you know, just like how you have judge, you know, judge is a title, right? You know, you have therapist, therapist, that's a title. There, there's many therapists, there's many titles. Prophet, prophet is a title given to one who, who says something before it happens. <coughs> <clears throat> okay. So let's see. Let's let's come over here. Let's now I'm gonna look up the definition for name. Okay. So let's look up the word name. Okay, so this is the definition of name from Google.com as you see right up here on the screen. Okay. And what do we see here? It says name. 
a word or a set of words by which a person, animal, place, or thing is known, addressed, or referred to. Okay. Okay. So that's not really a good definition because in the Paleo Hebrew, when somebody is given a name, it's not a set of words. Okay. In the Paleo Hebrew, especially back in the ancient world, when a person was given a name, they was given a name uh, singular, okay? Like Judah, okay? You're not gonna hear, you, you're not gonna hear some, uh, you're not gonna hear about some, somebody in the Old Testament, like, like David for an example, you know? Beloved of, of David. No, his name is not beloved of David. His name is David, Dawada. You see, Judah, Yahawada. You know, because back in the ancient world, okay, especially when we were living in the land of Israel, we did not have surnames. Surnames did not come about until we uh, went into captivity under the Romans. Really, I believe it started with the Greeks, okay? Surnames did not exist until we went into captivity under the Greeks. Okay? So, back in the ancient world, we all had one name. We did not have a last name. So again, you know, King David was not known as beloved of David. You know, he was not known as, you know, his name was, was, was not top tier David, for an example, you know. No, his name was David, Dawada. Okay, Joseph, Yawasak, you see, singular. So a name is not a set of words. That's not what a name is. When you look at a bird, a bird is known as a seagull. That's one name, that's not a set of words. So uh, for, for the first definition, we see a word or set of words by which a person, animal, place, or thing is known, addressed, or referred to. So you see, there's a huge difference between a title and a name. And the word, okay, the, okay, word of God, that's three words. The word of God is four words. And the word of God, is one of many titles that Yahawashai is known by. Yahawashai for allowing me to cross the street safely. Okay, so a title, let's look at it again, okay? Title, let's go to title. Title, then it says, uh, for definition two, right? A title is a name that describes someone's position or a job. A name is not something that describes somebody's position. Even though it could technically, because Yahawashai's position is also what? Being the Lord and Savior of the nation of Israel. But again, Yahawashai's, one of Yahawashai's titles is what? He's the Lord and Savior, in which does his name, you know, he delivers. His name literally means he delivers, which in the Hebrew, that's what? Yahawashai. So Yahawashai is, you know, in some cases, a person's name can describe their, you know, their position. But ultimately, a title. A title is a name 
that describes someone's position or job. Okay? And a name, right? A name is a word or a set of words by which a person, animal, place, or thing is known, addressed, or referred to. So, how do you address the Lord and Savior? You address him as Yahawashai. That's his name. Okay? So, now, when we come over here, right? Oh, forgive me. I was doing a little bit of studying. <laughs> okay. You know, it's a lot. I was doing some studying earlier while while I was on the bus. Um, but, uh, okay. Let's see. Baruch chapter 2, verse 30. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves and shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. Okay, their their God. For I will for I will give them in heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, and do what and think upon my name okay so if nobody is going to know the name of the lord until he returns how the fuck are, are we going to think upon the lord's name in captivity how are we how are we going to think upon the lord's name if we're not going to know it until he returns in order to think upon somebody's name you have to know it plain and simple right in order to think upon somebody's name, you have to know it. Okay. Furthermore, let's go to uh, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter two, verse twenty-one. Okay. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, ye men of Israel. Okay? Now, notice how it said, notice how this was written in the book of Acts, the second chapter. This was written after Yahawashai went back to the Father, to the right-hand side. Now, this applied back then, okay? But more so, this applies in these last days. Okay? Because do not the script do not the Holy Scripture say that the Lord's hand is not short that it cannot save? So that applies now. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So in order to be saved, you're going to have to know the name of the Messiah and the name of the Father before he returns, okay? Damn, man. I wish I had internet so I could show you this in the NLT. Because in, um, if we go to Revelation, right? Let's go to Revelation 14. Okay, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, when you read that in the NLT, it says having having uh, uh, his father's name and and his son's name written in their foreheads. So that's so the elect is going to have the name of the heavenly father and his son. Because you got some guys out there, they only worship the Most High. Well, what about the Son? Okay, what about First Timothy's, the, uh, I believe it's the, the uh, second chapter. There's one mediator 
between men and the most high, that's the man Yahweh shot. So you can't, you can't, you can't just, you know, when you send up prayers, you cannot expect your prayers to go directly to the heavenly father. No, you need the son. You need, you need the son too. You need Yahweh Shai too. Okay? Because what did Yahweh Shai tell his disciples? Okay? Uh, all authority and judgment and power has been given to him. <laughs> okay? So before any prayer reaches the Heavenly Father, your prayers are presented to Yahweh Shai first. Okay? So guess what? If you're just praying directly to the Father, to, to the Heavenly Father, well, guess what? Your prayer, the Heavenly Father is not gonna hear your prayers. You know why? Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, real quick. You know, I don't wanna get too off topic, but 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Let all things be done in decency and in order. You see, the Heavenly Father deals with order. Okay, the Heavenly Father said, if you want me to answer your prayers, your prayers is gonna to have to get through my son first, <laughs> okay? So your prayers have to get through the son first. So, you know, let's go to Proverbs 18 verse 10. You know, you can't just, you know, send up prayers and then you know, pray directly to the father. Nah, man. Okay, the, the, the scriptures say that we are as an unclean thing before the heavenly father. So uh, our prayers have to go to Yahweh Shai first, okay? Okay, Proverbs 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Okay, so, but how can the name be a, a strong, how can the name of the Lord be a strong tower if you're not gonna know it until Yahweh Shai returns? Okay? But you see, these guys at IUIC, they keep pushing the narrative that, uh, you know, nobody is gonna know the name. Nobody's gonna know the name uh, 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 until Yahweh Shai returns. Well, how the fuck is anybody gonna be saved? Because the, the, Holy, the, Holy, Scripture, the Holy Scriptures clearly tells you that, that the reason why the elect was delivered in the last days was from calling on the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Okay, and let me tell you something. The elect is not gonna be calling on the Word of God. <laughs> They're not gonna be calling on, you know, Emmanuel. They're not gonna be calling on Wonderful or Counselor, <laughs> okay? They're gonna be calling on Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Because Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father and his son, Yahweh Shai, is the true name of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. So so you you guys at IUIC, you need to show some fucking respect. Show some fucking respect. Show some fucking respect to the Heavenly Father and his son. And you, Lemur, Ayathan, hey, I don't like you, nigga. I never liked you, okay? Talking about you can call the Lord whatever whatever you want. And you know what, man? The, Lord, the Lord's got a little something special for you, nigga. Okay? Okay, Lemur? The Lord's got a little something special for you. And you committed adultery knowing this truth? Man, the Lord might just be setting you up for, 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 for a special judgment. A exceptionally, a, a exceptionally special judgment. You cannot just call the Heavenly Father, uh oh, whatever the fuck you want. Who the hell you think you are, nigga? You know. Hey, let, let me calm down, man. <laughs> man, okay? I can't stand niggas. Just straight up disrespectful, man. 
after everything Yahweh Shai done did for us. You're going to sit there and say you can call him whatever you want. No, the fuck you can't. Would you like would you like people to call you with whatever they want? Would you like people to call you a bitch? Would you like somebody to call you a, 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 a homo? Would you like somebody to call you a fruitcake? Okay, would you like somebody to call, call you a, a, a black ass cockeyed a, a Tasmanian devil? No, you wouldn't. You would, want, you would want people to call you by your Hebrew name. And how the fuck do you have a Hebrew name, but the Most High and His Son to y'all don't have a Hebrew name? Like, what, what's wrong with you guys? But anyways. Okay, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Okay, and, and the righteous is talking about the Lord's elect. Okay, that's the righteous. But, um, okay, let's go to Revelation 3, okay? Because one of the reasons why they say that nobody is going to know the name is because they'll say, see, look, look, the Lord said that and he that overcometh, will I, will I give it a pillar and I will give it to him my new name. But look. What they don't understand is that before the Bible, the KJV Bible was translated in English, did you know that it was written in Greek? Did you know that the Bible was written in Hebrew and in Greek? Okay. English is basically a broken language. You know, one word in English one word in the English can have multiple different meanings. Come on, man. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, especially when new speak came around, Esau changed up the meaning and definition of different words, like the word rape, you know. Originally, the word rape meant to grab or to seize, to seize, or to grab. Like when the police put your ass in handcuffs, you've been seized. You've been seized and taken into custody, into the judicial system. But when Newspeak came around, they changed the definition of rape. Now, now they say that rape has something to do with something sexual. So English, Look, English is a broken language, okay? Just like the word gay. The word gay used to mean happy. If, 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 if you was a happy individual, you was known for being gay. Now, eat, now, now, when, when, when new speak came around, now they say that gay, gay, gay means that you're, you're, you're into uh, uh, the same sex. So, hey, English is a broken language. And um, when you read the book of Sirach, the first chapter, okay, and I believe the very first verse, or it could be the uh, beginning narration, it clear, he clearly tells you that not all languages have the same force, okay? The Paleo-Hebrew is the most powerful language on this planet, okay? Okay. Not even Greek is on the level of Hebrew, on Paleo Hebrew. Excuse me, get these rocks out of my shoes. I'm walking to work right now, but I'm actually early, so I don't have to worry about rushing through lessons just to get it, get, you know, get it done. So 
the point is, is that before the Holy Scriptures was translated into English, it was originally written in the Hebrew and Greek, which means what? In order to better understand the scriptures, in order to better understand the Holy Scriptures, you got to go back to the Hebrew and the Greek. Okay, now the New Testament was written in the Greek. Why? Because at that time, when, 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 when the Messiah came on the scene, we, we was in captivity under the Greco-Roman Empire. Okay, and, and Greco is just another term for Greek. Okay. Okay, the Roman Empire was being ruled by Edomites who was calling themselves Greek and speaking a Greek language. Okay, so, but the Old Testament was written in Hebrew because at that time, you know, you know, and, and, and uh, at that time, we, we, we were still more attached to our customs, but we became more distant from our customs when we went into uh, captivity under the Greeks. Even though in the Roman Empire, you still had Israelites speaking Hebrew, okay, still, okay. The New Testament was written in the Greek because we was in captivity under the Greco-Roman Empire. So you gotta go back to the Greek as well as the Hebrew in order to understand what the Holy Scriptures is saying. Because you'll see the word, <coughs> like for an example, you see the word God in the book of Psalms where it says, I have said you are gods, right? And you'll think that's talking about the same word as God in the book of Genesis. No, that word God in the book of Genesis is Allah Okay, which means the angels. Okay, in which Yahawashai was amongst those angels. The elect who helped Yahweh Shai to make the heavens and the earth. Okay? But now that word gods in the book of Psalms where it says, I have said ye are gods, that word God there means judges. Okay? It, 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 it ultimately, I believe it means judges. Judges. Okay. <clears throat> but I'm gonna have to look more because I'm pretty sure there's more to, to that to that to the definition of that word, you know. So you know, you gotta be able to discern between the Hebrew words, you know? Sometimes you see the word Lord there, it'd be, it'd be all in, in lowercase letters, lowercase L, lowercase O, lowercase R, lowercase D. Okay, that word Lord there, okay, it's not the same as, you know, the Lord. Okay, when we see that word Lord there, uh, lowercase L, lowercase O, lowercase R, lowercase D, that Hebrew word there, I believe is Adon, which means, you know, ruler. Okay, it means ruler. But now when you see the word Lord there, capital L, lowercase o, lowercase r, and lowercase d, when you look up that word, that word, when you look up that word there, it's Yahawashai. That's talking about Yahawashai, okay? And then, and then when you see LORD in all caps, that's the Most High Yahweh. So you gotta, you gotta look up, you, you gotta look up these Hebrew words. You gotta look up these words, man. That's just like the word world, you know. <clears throat> 
you look up that word world in the New Testament and, and, and you, you think it's the, it's the same meaning. You know? Just like um, that word world in Revelation, the third chapter, right? Where the Lord said that I will keep thee from the hour of temptation that shall come upon all the world to try them. That word world there is not the same as, uh, you know, the one in the book of John where, where it says, for God so loved the world, right? John, the seventh chapter, for God so loved the world. That's not, that's not, that's not the same uh, uh, Greek word, okay? Because the Greek word for world in Revelation, the third chapter, where it says, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. That Greek word there is oikimeni, which means the whole inhabited earth. But now when you look up that word world in uh, John, the seventh chapter, for God so loved the world, right? Is that talking about for, for is that talking about for, for God so loved the whole inhabited earth? No. That word world there in John the seventh chapter, for God so loved the world, for, for God so loved the world, that word world there is cosmos, okay? Or, or cosmos, which means, which is talking about a particular group of people, which will be the Israelites, okay? The Lord have only loved the Israelites. And what's the proof of that? Amos chapter three, verse one, down to two. Hear, hear this word, which the Lord speak up against you, O house of Israel, against the whole, uh, okay, uh, 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 against the whole house, which I brought up uh, out, out of the land of Egypt. In verse two, it says what? You only have I known of all the families of the earth. The families of the earth is talking about the nations. The Lord has only known the nation of Israel amongst all the other nations on the planet. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Because what is iniquity? Sin upon sin. What is sin? Transgression of the laws. Who was the laws given to? Psalms chapter uh, 147 verse 19. He show up his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation and as for his judgments, they, the other nations, have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Okay? So you gotta go to them word. You gotta go to them words, okay? Let me see. Okay, let me see. So let's see. Um okay, so Revelation 3 and 12, right? This is what it says. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, right? Which that's what the elect is going to become after they get beamed up into what the world calls UFOs, okay? They're going to become New Jerusalem, which, and, and, and that word new there is kinos, which means refreshed because the elect is going back to their original state uh, of what they were before they fell from grace, okay? So that, that, word, that word there for new Jerusalem is refreshed, okay? We're gonna be refreshed. But anyways, it says, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, right? New Jerusalem, that's the elect, okay? Which is gonna come down from, from, from Yahweh's chariot, that's the elect, okay? And I will write upon him my new name. Let's see, look! That proves that nobody's gonna know the name. It's a brand new name. Like, I mean, come on, man. As if the Lord is gonna, you know, just, you know, come up with a new idea one day. I'm gonna, you know, I'm, 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 I'm you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pull a fast one on, on, on these guys. You know, as soon as they come to the realization that they're Israelites, I'm, I'm gonna change up my name. No, my name is not going to be yeah. My name is not going to be Yahweh anymore. No, I'm going to change my name to 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 uh, uh, uh yeah, Yeshua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, better yet, I'm going to make my name unknown, and ain't nobody going to know my name. I'm going to change it up. 
Uh, come on, man. My new name. Uh, and then when you read Malachi 3 and 6, right? <coughs> when you read... <laughs> When you when you read Malachi three and six, what does it say? Did, did did not the Lord say, "For I am the Lord that change not"? The Lord don't change, okay. Oh, yeah. And as a matter of fact, let's get that real quick. Then I'll come back there. Somebody get ready to close it out. Malachi three and six, okay. Okay, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So the, the Lord don't change. So 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 why why would he change his name for it if he don't change? The heavenly father is not double minded. And, and, and the, the script, the Holy Scriptures clearly tells you that a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So the Lord don't change. So when we see that I will write upon him my new name. When you look up that word new, what is this talking about? That word new there is actually the Greek word kainos. Okay, I will write upon him my new name. That, that word new there is not talking about the actual word new. Okay, that's kainos. That word new there goes back to the Greek word kainos, which means refreshed. Okay, the Lord said he was going to make his name refreshed back into the earth again because before Abba Bivens woke up before the Lord had woke up Abba Bivens nobody knew the name of the Heavenly Father or his son but but when Abba Bivens woke up to to who he is right well when Abba Bivens woke up to who he is right he um you know one of the things that the Lord refreshed into the earth besides refreshing you know, his memory that he's an Israelite, the Lord refreshed his name to Abba Bivens. You see, refreshed. So the, the, the Lord refreshed his name into the earth. And it started with Abba Bivens. Okay, Elder Abba Bivens. So when it says I would write upon him my new name, it's not talking about a brand new name. Like, you know, as soon as the Lord come back, he going to give you a, a, his brand new name. Nah, no, man. His name was Yahawashai 2,000 plus years ago. His name is going to be Yahawashai when he returns. The Heavenly Father's name uh, uh, is Yahawa. It was Yahawa before heaven and earth was created, before Yahawashai was created. Guess what? His name is going to be Yahawa for all eternity. <laughs> okay? Plain and simple. The Lord don't change. You know, like get the fuck out of here, man. Like, like, like the Most High is just gonna come up with a brand new name, and you know that. No, no, no. This is my name. And nah, man. No, 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 no. <coughs> okay, no. <coughs> the, so, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and the Son's name is Yahweh Shai. So that word new there, when Yahweh said I would write upon him my new name, that word new there is kainos, which means to be refreshed. So let's leave off with this. I'm going to leave off with this scripture. Proverbs chapter, let's see, chapter 30, verse 4. Who have ascended up into heaven or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fist? Who have bound the waters in a garment? Who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Why is this question being asked? Because King Solomon knew that there will be niglets in the last days denying his name. Denying the name of the heavenly father and his son. Saying that nobody will know the name. But like Yahweh Shai said, whosoever shall confess Yahweh Shai before men, him shall he confess also before his father. Because remember, we got to get through Yahweh Shai first before we can get to the father. But whosoever shall deny Yahweh Shai before men, him shall Yahweh Shai deny also before his father. So keep that in mind. Okay. 
So according to biblical prophecy, the, e the elect is going to know the name of the heavenly father and his son before the Messiah, Yahawashai, returns. With that, I'm going to leave off with this scripture, actually. Okay, Revelation 3, verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. With that, I'm going to say Shalom is on to the next. And this message is to the elect. We know that the elect is going to have the true name of the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh and the elect is also going to have the true name of his son, which is Yahawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. With that, I'm going to say Shalom is on to the next one.